From the Larry Hanfield Athletic Training Center on the campus here at Bethune-Cookman University, I'm Lynn Thompson. Welcome to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider, and I'm joined by our head football coach, Terry Sims, of the 1-0 BCU Fighting Wildcats. Coach, 1-0, it sounds good. 2-0 would have been better, but of course, uh, we lost that one last week to Hurricane Dorian. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do about, you know, uh, storms, hurricanes, anything of that nature. It's outside of our control. I mean, obviously, we would have loved to have played the football game, but uh, well, we couldn't get it in. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Coach. In fact, not only could we not get it in, we couldn't get in to Daytona Beach. Uh, uh, everybody in America knows that we were stranded for three and a half days in Atlanta after the big win over Jackson State. And we basically had to uh, set up shop to run uh, the athletics department and the football program from the Atlanta Airport Marriott Gateway. And we're so thankful for those folks and the people at the MEAC SWAC Challenge for working with us uh, in that time of crisis. Coach, when you talk, talk in terms of, 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 uh, of the game against Southeastern Louisiana, it was the return match of a home and home series. We went out there two years ago, escaping a hurricane here and won a a huge football game out in, in uh, at Southeast Coach, and uh, we were looking forward to to playing a nationally ranked football team, weren't we? Of course, you always want to play uh, teams of their caliber because yeah. it it shows you where your team is. It, it sets the bar for your football team. Uh, it, it gives you a measuring stick to see how far you are in all three phases of the game to play a, a school such as Southeast Louisiana. Yeah, they come off a big win over Jacksonville State, Coach, uh, in the nation's top 20 right now. But this football team that we have here in Daytona Beach is a football team to be reckoned with. And while you were not operating on all cylinders for the entire game, what we saw in the second half was a beautiful display of Wildcat football. It was. Uh, we, we didn't play up to par in the first half, but uh, the guys didn't quit. They, they, they held a course. and. They came back out with a lot more energy and being a lot more detailed, doing the things they're coached to do. And well, let's take a look plays. at the highlights. We started making How plays, a whole lot of plays we'll for you to back. see. We'll come back we'll in just a few moments. And in today's show, we're going to take a look at the Wildcat offense uh, one week after the victory and then defensive unit from the same standpoint. And then we'll go around the league. All of that uh, and a whole lot more coming your way as Wildcat Insider Football continues.
get up field. And this one lands in the hand of the Wildcats again. This time, the true freshman, Devon Trey. And the pitch out and the easy catch from Teron Mallard. And just like that, Bethune Cookman now takes the lead. Special teams now, Bethune Cookman with a chance to extend the lead from two point conversion. He holds on for the big grab. This time up the middle and score for Ladarian Wilson, the junior. Position. And Johnson almost got to him, able to get away was Ponder, and Ponder takes a hit, stands up, and bubbled the football. Coming back the other way, Sam Mark down the sideline, continuing to see great defense from a Cookman. He's in for the score. We are definitely going to have to take a look at this. Yeah. One. On the field, they call it a touchdown as... It's a new day of Bethune-Cookman University's changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research, and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready. The tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune-Cookman University. It's MEAC football season, and things are about to get wild. Could the Aggies bury the Bison? Or will the Bears make a run at the ratings board? Will the Rattlers strike before the Bulldogs bite? Will the Eagles sink their talents into the title or feel the Hornets sting? Could the Wildcats wrap their jaws around victory? Or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson. It's Terry Sims and the Cats are 1-0. A big um, Labor Day weekend victory over Jackson State in Atlanta in the MEAC SWAC Challenge, 36-15. Uh, Coach, that's all the football that we have on tape in terms of opponents looking at this year's football team. Uh, this week we prepared to go down to Miami to play the Hurricanes, and uh, they would have had the benefit of having two full football games on tape of us. But uh, due to Hurricane Dorian, we could not play the game against Southeastern Louisiana. And uh, so now when you exchange tape, let's talk about that offensively. When you exchange the tape, uh, so you get two tapes from Miami and they only get one on you? Uh, yeah, and you know, it, it's kind of a gentleman's agreement. Yeah. You know, you really don't have an issue if you don't have your other game. They know that we're not holding the game back. Okay. We just, you know, we were not able to play the game. So uh, we had already exchanged our first game. Uh, a few days ago, and they ended up just going ahead and, and sending the game that they played on Saturday, which, you know, we, we thank them for that, and uh, I, I think they understand that yeah. we're not doing anything, you know, to try to side swipe them or, or try to do anything right. underhanded right. to them with the film. There is no film to show because, or, or trade because we didn't play a game. Well, Coach, uh, this past Saturday, you had to simulate 
game situation and game conditions. Uh, you kept as close to the normal football schedule as you possibly could. Let's talk about that from an offensive standpoint because if there was one unit this uh, two Saturdays ago that, that needed to be in sync, in the first half, it was the Wildcat offense. It was, and, and you know, I said in, in a couple of different interviews, we had, um, a, I think, a lot of good plays called, but we had guys trying to press, trying to win the game on one play, and they, they were trying to do a little bit too much. So we just had to get them in and settle them down, and I think we did that in, at halftime, and they came back out and played later in the second half, and that's what we did from a coach's standpoint this past week. We just had to show those guys that they can play the game and we just needed to settle down and play the game the way we know we know how to play. Coach, one thing I did want to ask you about the very first play on offense in Atlanta, you brought a guy in motion and it seemed that play seemed to be out of sync. It looked like it might have been a screen play or something. What happened on play one offensively? It, it was it was just our center said he, he couldn't hear uh, our indicator. Which, which is our hand clap, and mm -hmm. uh, they didn't hear the, the check from the quarterback because it was loud. It was loud down on the field. The stadium was loud. We had a great crowd there. So I think it was a little bit of first game, first play jitters. He really, uh, his adrenaline was going, and he really didn't focus in like he should have. Okay. So he didn't, he didn't snap the ball on the indicator, and everyone else moved when they should have. The ball just didn't move. Okay. Uh, Coach, you're going to find that same thing to happen this coming Saturday at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami against the Hurricanes, their home opener, you're going to have a, a massive crowd of over 50,000 people. They're going to make noise, and uh, they're going to try to disrupt the offense. Uh, and I know you've got things in play for that. What, have, what do you expect to see from week one to now the new week two? Because most football coaches say that second week is when you make your most improvements. It usually is because you, you have an opportunity to actually show the players live game situations mm -hmm. on film and show them because practice is what it is it's practice but you know game time it, it's turned up a little bit yeah. it, it's a little bit different and you get a chance to show them and teach them from game tape and, and you know you get an opportunity to correct mistakes and guys get a chance to go back out that second game and they play I think a little bit better we didn't have that opportunity with, with Southeast Louisiana, so now we are playing uh, our game two against Miami, and hopefully we hit all those strides. Coach, a bigger, stronger, faster opponent, uh, probably the most uh, biggest, uh, the fastest and the strongest opponent that we'll face all year uh, in, in a Hurricane football team. Does that change your offensive strategy? No, I don't think it, it, it changes your offensive strategy because you, you want to do what you do, you want to be who you are. Uh, it's just like anyone else we play, you know, they have some guys on their, their football team that are key guys and you have to know where those guys are at all yeah. times. So you have to game plan for and around those guys. Okay, so it makes no difference the, the caliber of personnel. Every football team that you play has some key stakeholders or key players out there that you've got to short circuit. No question. Hmm, very interesting information. We'll come back in just a few moments and we'll take a look on the defensive side of the ball to hear Coach's opinion a week back uh, as he looks at the tape from a critical standpoint and now making projections against uh, lining up against the vaunted Miami Hurricane offense. We'll be back in just a few. Hi, I'm Brent Kreit. What will we do to move the university toward greatness? To truly succeed, it takes sharp and up-to-the-minute skills, intercultural know-how, and leadership. As Mary McLeod Bethune knew, such ambitions will require a commitment that must be continuous. We will make the student experience the North Star for all our decision-making. The new generation of BC begins with you. It's MEAC football season, and things are about to get wild. Could the Aggies bury the Bison? Or will the Bears make a run at the ratings board? Will the Rattlers strike before the Bulldogs bite? Will the Eagles sink their talents into the title or feel the Hornets sting? Could the Wildcats wrap their jaws around victory? Or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. The 
Club of Thune Cookman University. 40 Under 40 Awards, Friday, October 25th, 2019, at the Hard Rock Hotel. The doors open at 11.30 a.m. Young professionals making a difference. This is the premier homecoming event you don't want to miss. Come celebrate our young movers and shakers as they help raise $40,000 for the 40 Under 40 Scholarship Fund. The Bethune-Cookman University, 40 Under 40 Awards. It's a new day of Bethune-Cookman University's changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research, and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready. The tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune-Cookman University. Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. We're about to talk about the Wildcat defense. I'm Lynn Thompson along with head coach Terry Sims. Uh, the Cats are 1-0 after a big win in Atlanta over Jackson State 36-15. The Cats found themselves down 9 nothing. coach. Uh, you give up close to 500 yards of total offense. And while some folks would say that that is a, a red flag, uh, you know, over 150 of those yards came in the form of three big plays. They did, and you know, I, I, that's what I talked to our defense about. Are we happy with the, the number of yards that, that we gave up? No, and we can't do that week in and week out and win football games. Mm -hmm. But we, we won the most important stat, and that's the, that's the scoreboard. Uh, we had more points than they did at the end of the game. But we, we definitely want to stop the big plays because you're correct, three or four big plays uh, accounted for almost 200 yards of, mm -hmm. of that offense, and we can't have that happen. So we, we definitely have been working on that this week and working on our guys staying focused and, and maintaining their coverage on the back end. Uh, even when the quarterback does scramble out, we have to make sure we stay uh, in the same area as our receivers. Coach, one, uh, those three plays happened on the passing, uh, in the passing game. Uh, uh, I think it probably would be a different scenario. You may be having some things differently to say had those been long running plays. Oh, it, without a doubt. Well, you, you definitely can't have running plays to go for that long. You know, two of those big pass plays, the quarterback was hit as he was releasing the ball. Right. We just have to make sure we maintain coverage on the back end. Our guys are getting there. They're getting pressure. The quarterbacks are really just throwing the ball up. You know, in one of the big plays, we just totally busted a coverage, and the guy was standing downfield by himself. So you can't have things like that happen, and I think our guys understand that now. And it's a lot easier to correct those things off of a win than if you, if you don't win the football game. Okay, so now going into this weekend's football game against the Hurricanes, uh, they've got a, a redshirt freshman quarterback who has thrown the ball extremely well. But everybody that knows football knows that the identity of the Miami Hurricane football team is to be able to run the football. It is, and you know, they have a stable of running backs that, that are not bad, and they run hard, they, they, they run well. Uh, so we'll have our hands full with that. But they also have a receiving core that's, that has played well in the last you know, couple of weeks. So I think we have our, our work cut out for us on defense, but I think our guys will be up to a challenge. We always get up for, for uh, football games, period, not just playing the University of Miami, mm -hmm. but we do have a large number of guys on our team that are from South Florida, and they play you know, either with or against a lot of these guys on this uh, Miami team. So they're excited about going down and, and, and playing against you know, guys that they play with or played against in high school. So I think it's going to be a great day. How much does playing uh, a series of three non-conference games to open the year affect your strategy as it relates to the ultimate goal of getting to the Celebration Bowl, because you've got uh, a SWAC opponent, then we had a Southland Conference opponent, uh, actually four in a row. Uh, then you've got uh, Miami, and then the following week we're going to another SWAC team, the Mississippi Valley. So when do you begin to, to really fine tune, I guess, your rotation uh, as it relates to, to pr the primary goal of winning the conference championship? Well, I think you, you know, you started week one, but when you get to week four, I think you have a pretty good idea of who you are 
offensively, defensively, and special teams wise. You come into camp or you leave out, leave spring and come into camp knowing you have an identity mm-hmm. or who you want to be. But in the game of football, you don't know who's going to step up and who will come out and, and, and be a guy that year. And you have to tailor all your, your, your offense, defense, and special teams around the, the, the skill set of the guys that are playing. Okay, so now, the skill set, uh, particularly the younger guys, with the new rules saying that you got four games. Correct. How do you do that? Do you, do you burn the four, first four games of the year or what? Yes, I, I do, because I want to see if they can play. And, mm-hmm. and if they show up in these first four games and they show that they can help us, then that four-game deal is out for them. They're playing. But I, I don't want to wait to, you know, the, the last four games of the season and a guy is off the charts and you're saying, man, he could have helped us win a couple football games this year. Okay. Well, Coach, when we come back in just a few moments, we'll talk about who won football games in the league, and then we'll turn our attention to this week's upcoming schedule around the MEAC. We'll be back in just a few. From Daytona Beach and on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University, you're watching the BC Wildcat Football Insider. Terry Sims, I'm Lynn Thompson, and we're, we just got a few minutes to talk about uh, uh, what's going on in our league, Coach. Uh, and then we'll shift our attention to, to Miami before we close the show out. Uh, the Cats are 1-0 so far uh, with the win over Jackson State. We had this past Saturday's game against Southeastern Louisiana, which would have been the home opener for us, canceled because of Hurricane Dorian. Uh, we had to make that decision early in the week while we were stuck in Atlanta uh, for three and a half days, and we had to make that decision with the uh, input from, the, from all of our emergency management officials and university officials on campus. We made the right call, didn't we? Oh, it's no doubt we made the right call. I think when you, when you think about kids' safety and, and all of our staff and, and everyone that went to Atlanta with us, you have to think about the safety yeah. and not just getting back and getting ready to play a football game because we didn't know who we were going to come back to a stadium to have a football game. That is so, so true. We had to, one, think about the safety, then think about the possibilities of actually being able to play a game. You know, that storm, uh, while we escaped uh, a, a, a Category 5 storm, Coach, uh, it affected uh, several other teams in the league. They were able, however, to make the adjustment in play uh, because they were able to, they had a longer window to make preparations. Uh, let's go around the league now and talk about the South Carolina State had to wait until the hurricane passed through the low country mm-hmm. uh, and they beat Lane 34 nothing. and the Bulldogs are 2-0, and Coach. They are, and, and you know, glad to see Coach Pugh and his staff uh, down there and they're, they're getting it together. Um, 
love to see you know, a guy that, that may have been behind the eight ball for a while. Yeah. He's coming out and doing well, and I'm happy for him. North Carolina Central, Coach Trey Oliver seeking his first win as the head coach. They fall on the road to Towson 42 to 3 and are 0 and 2 so far this year. Norfolk State bounces back after a close one against Old Dominion. Uh, they dismantle Virginia State 44 21 and go 1 and 1 on the year. The Spartans look to be uh, very exciting. They, they do. Uh, they, they look exciting, but, you know, Coach Scott has said it all along, even during the spring, that, you know, his team was growing up, and, and they would be a different ball club this year, and I think they're, they're showing it the way they played Old Dominion. a t goes out of the league, played to an ACC opponent, Duke University, the Blue Devils, win at 45-13, and the Bulldogs, the Aggies, coach a 1-1 one one on the year. Uh, that didn't surprise you, that loss, uh, the level of competitiveness. Uh, a t played well. Uh, nonetheless, they're going to go out of uh, conference again this week, Coach, as they're going to host Charleston Southern. But uh, the Aggies are just who everybody says they are, contenders. They are, and they, they have been for a few years. And, you know, one thing you can count on with Coach uh, Sam Washington and his guys, they're going to come to play. Howard goes out of league. Uh, two Youngstown State loses at 54-28. They're 0 and 2. FAMU, Morgan State, and Dell State all had buys. Coach, uh, this week, a lot of action around the league. Norfolk is at Coastal Carolina. Morgan State at James Madison. We're down at Hard Rock Stadium at 4 p.m. Delaware State hosts Division II Lincoln, Pennsylvania. Howard and Hampton in a big one, Coach. And uh, a t at Charleston Southern. Gardner-Webb and Central in an in-state rivalry. South Carolina State comes to Florida, to South Florida. And FAMU opens up at home against Fort Valley. Uh, a lot of action around the league, but let's talk about the action for the next 15 seconds ago at Hard Rock Stadium. 4 p.m. kickoff against the, the U down in South Florida. Coach, what can the fans expect? You can expect a, a, a detailed football team. You're going to see an exciting brand of football. You know, I, I think our guys are up. They're ready to go. They have not played in a week, and I think that's different. Playing a game, you're being off a week, and it's not because it's a bye week, but the storm, and now they get an opportunity to play again. And you get an opportunity to follow the Cats down to Hard Rock Stadium. Hey, Wildcat Nation, come on, join us. If you can't, the game will be on the ACC Network, and you can use any one of our digital Cat Eye Network platforms to follow the Wildcats. For Terry Sims, I'm Lynn Thompson. We'll see you in South Florida.